in common with us. Here we knew about industries, farms, ranches, and homes that would find it difficult to exist without the electrical energy brought in by NRECA member cooperatives. Members traveled to the annual meeting from all over the country. It was reunion time again for old friends and business associates. This meeting was carefully planned. It attracted wives as well as husbands, and there were things to do for young and old. Here's a young one, the youngest one. He wanted his official badge so that he could be in on everything. As ever, the People Finder Index was a popular center of interest. This is the spot where many members, some who live and work only a few miles from each other back home, were able to meet in some cases for the first time. And this is where over 8,000 members really got together for the business at hand. Annual meeting of NRECA will now come to order. It began on a pleasant note with these words from Governor Sawyer of Nevada. We consider it a great honor for Las Vegas and the state to host a group that has contributed so much to the progress of this country. It is fitting that your topic at this Las Vegas meeting concerns your contribution to the strength of America. The groups you represent have used the energy of electricity to bring light and power to a vital segment of American life. In response, we heard Ari Yarborough, our president, say, Our frontiers and our challenges are great. And how eagerly we cross these frontiers and how well we accept the challenges will determine rural electrification's future. Indeed, it will determine whether or not we have a future. In the next four days, you will hear some of the nation's top leaders discuss some of the frontiers and challenges for rural electrification. And you will discuss them too. Before we leave this hall, we will have plainly demonstrated the validity of the meeting theme, rural electrification important for America's strength. And before we depart this city, I think that we will have shown that rural electrification has a future, a great and important future. Important not only to rural America, but to the entire nation. Our general manager, Clyde T. Ellis, moved the program forward with his stimulating thoughts about action for the future. This is the part of America more than any other that is utterly dependent upon the type of resources program which you have vigorously sponsored these 21 years. Water development, hydroelectric power, the great Boulder Dam, Hoover Dam, only a short distance from here, electric transmission, rural electrification. These are the lifeblood of the arid west. We are serving the breadbasket of our nation and of the world. And partly because of this service, the American farmer produces evermore. All of this we are doing. 
We are serving directly scores of defense installations, all vital to the nation's security. Missile bases, missile and satellite tracking stations, radar and navigation control stations, even in the remotest areas, to help protect us all. Throughout the United States, we are taking the lead in rural areas development. RAD and the Area Development Administration are now beginning to, re to achieve remarkable successes with your help and leadership. Much of this is yours. You helped create these programs and you can benefit tremendously from them. And there is something more here too, which I believe in the longer reach of history may be even more significant than the fact of our serving ourselves with electricity. Because every consumer member of our systems, every citizen, is also the consumer owner of his system. He also has one vote. He helps determine the policies. And this is democracy at its finest. This is the way we are going to build together a head of steam that will give us the impact for recasting our image full speed ahead. That was the high point of the morning. Now it's time to sample some of that Nevada sunshine. Let's look at the outdoor exhibits. Here's somebody else who is also aiming high. Much easier and safer than climbing a pole. This is a good way to keep up with the newest and finest equipment. And even if you don't come from Missouri, there's always somebody ready to show you. Well, we could spend hours here, but it's time to get back for the next business session. David E. Bell, administrator of the AID program for the Department of State, described how over a dozen public-spirited NRECA members are providing active leadership in Latin America. I need not tell you, ladies and gentlemen, of the potential impact that rural electrification and the experience of cooperatives can have on a people desiring a better life in a free society. Perhaps the most significant contribution your organization and other cooperatives can make in this effort to strengthen the security of the free world is to demonstrate the vitality of cooperative democracy, to stimulate the pride of individual ownership, and to encourage the economic growth of rural areas. One of the, great the Food for Wages program was outlined by R. W. Reuter. This idea is speeding up development of rural electric systems in other countries. The president reaffirmed his belief in the philosophy of NRECA when he personally signed the contract between aid and NRECA to extend rural electrification to the evolving countries in the world. Congresswoman Catherine May represents the Grand Coulee section of Washington State. She grew up where electric power has been important to progress for two generations. Mrs. May outlined the special problems of Ruberbia. That's where people work at jobs in the city, but live in rural areas. Secretary of Agriculture, Orville Freeman, brought with him a very special greeting from the White House. The letter closed with the words, You have my warm congratulations for your accomplishments of the past two decades, and my best wishes for continued success. Sincerely, John F. Kennedy. Surplus stocks are beginning to come under control. There are today 700 million fewer bushels of grain on hand than was the case two years ago. There's $300 million less in the budget that the taxpayers of this country will meet than there would be if these surplus stocks had not been drawn down. At the end of this year, 
We expect there will be no more surplus in the feed grain program if it is as successful, and I believe it will be, because it is an even better program for the farmer than those of 1961 and 1962. And if we have favorable action in the wheat referendum this spring, within three years, there will be no more wheat surplus. And as you go through the fine exhibits out here, I hope you will go and take a look at the rural area development exhibit and the pictures there. This program is a blending and coordination of all the available resources of the Department of Agriculture, conservation, credit, forestry, recreation, industrial development, education, and other public services in a long range attack, a long range attack to remove the blight of rural poverty. Now you've taken the cooperative movement in general and the REAs in particular, a very great share of responsibility in this. And as you know, your dynamic and driving general manager, Clyde Ellis, recognized the importance of this program very early. And he has been a very important force for effective action, as you have around the country. The REA, you know, has accepted primary responsibility for developing industrial and commercial projects under the Rural Area Development Program. The role of REA most emphatically is not finished, it's only beginning. This, I submit, is sound policy and one that will serve the nation well. Thank you very much. take a quick tour of the exhibit area. We'll get an eye full of the most modern machinery, appliances, and services. Things and ideas that improve health, save labor and time, make jobs for an expanding population, and at the same time, make our world a more pleasant place to live in, no matter where we might live, work, or play. Our speakers. Although he is truly a VIP on the record, he is just folks when he's off duty, because that's the way Lyndon Johnson of Texas wants it to be. We feel we know a great deal more about each other as a result of his visit. us to catch only a few of the highlights. At the next session in the convention hall, Congressman H.T. Johnson of California reminded us of some vital statistics. America's opportunity for resource development depends largely on how wisely and how well we use our land, our minerals, and our water. Man's life on earth 
regardless of industrial refinements, continues to depend upon the basic raw materials of all life, the sun, soil, water, and minerals. The utilization we make of our natural resources is vitally important to our economic growth. In my experiences as a member of Congress, I have seen many foreign nations come to this country in search of assistance in the way of various programs. These nations invariably place great dependence upon the development of their resources. Indicating an awareness of the importance of their development, which some of us here at home sometimes forget. In total figures, the daily use of water in the United States has increased from 40 billion gallons at the turn of the century in 1900 to some 265 billion gallons today. The total could reach 600 billion gallons consumed daily by the year 1980, and that has us all worried at this particular time. Now, just how much water is 600 billion gallons is a good question. But I'm certain that all of you people since visiting here have seen like me and they tell us that it would take just 12 days at that rate to drain that entire vast body of water. We're the dynamics of our 1963 advertising program were blueprinted for us by Jerry Anderson, assistant to our general manager. So in the light of what you see and hear at this great meeting in Nevada, please go home and talk the matter over with other members of your board. Then fill out your pledge and send it in. TNT has been a good program, and TNT is going to be an even better program. And if you provide the funds, which we must have to do this job, we pledge to you that everything humanly possible will be done to make TNT the program you're proud to support. Thank you. Future Strength for America was the confident keynote sounded by Norman Clapp. REA Administrator for the Department of Agriculture. It's always an inspiration to attend one of these great annual meetings of the National Rural Electric Cooperative Association. It is an inspiration because you are the kind of people you are. Acknowledged leaders in rural America, doers of great deeds, builders of a better way of life for this nation. More than that, you represent a way of life where doing for one's neighbor is just as important as doing for oneself. In this critical period ahead, we in REA can be of important assistance in many ways, but in a very real sense, the ultimate determination of the survival and effectiveness of the rural electrification cooperative systems will depend on how well you and the thousands, yes, the millions of rural people will serve in as well as be served by your cooperatives. Thank you very much. promised, we had our turn to ask questions from the floor of the convention hall. The colorful Walter Harrison served as moderator, and he didn't spare the bell to keep things moving along. Panthers on the way. This panel, among others familiar to you, included Assistant Secretary of Agriculture John Baker and Assistant Secretary of the Interior Kenneth Holland. Key speakers really pitched in with prompt answers. Current legislation and forecasts about the future were among the subjects asked about. Eighteen smaller meetings, called panel forums and special interest panels, provided stimulating food for thought about a wide range of subjects. These were town hall type meetings, with many opportunities for exchange of ideas and experiences. We covered everything from operational improvement and sales service to public relations and industry teamwork. 
the ladies demonstrated a keen interest in the panel devoted to the power of a woman. The subjects they discussed, the role women should play in their rural electric co-ops, by Mrs. Clapp, wife of the REA administrator, and the challenge to the American woman, by Mrs. Freeman, wife of the Secretary of Agriculture. <laughs> What does it look like inside Las Vegas Hotel? Well, we won't really take the edge off your first trip out here, but take our word for it. The interiors are very comfortable and easy to look at. This couple from their room at the modern Riviera Hotel look down on a panorama, plus a distant view of the world-famous convention hall. Swim or sunbathe, these pools are world-famous. be Miss Rural Electrification for 1963. The judges go to work. The contestants represent member companies in California, Florida, Illinois, Kentucky, South Carolina, Tennessee, Wisconsin, Texas, and Georgia. Charming Miss Tonda Curry wins the crown and a valuable scholarship. She represents the South Plains Electric Cooperative at Lubbock, Texas. Second and third place winners also received scholarship awards. There were other winners too. Here's the drawing for the Rambler car, won by Mr. George Lorenz of Wells, Minnesota. Miss Rural Electrification of 1962, Patricia Burns of Georgia, selected the lucky name for this power-packed prize. Luck was with Mr. Burrow Cudliffe of Licking Valley REC, Jackson, Kentucky, when he registered for this prize. This powerful little tractor will save him many man hours. The main street of Las Vegas is a brilliant show in itself. Think of the kilowatt hours being used to keep these lights burning. We had fun just looking at all the places to go and all the things to enjoy. These are some of the places we used to wander about when we saw them mentioned in news stories and magazine articles. We had difficulty selecting which world-famous personality to see next. We promise you now that we will do all within our power to carry out your desires as expressed in your resolutions. This was the pledge of President-elect A.C. Hoffey of South Dakota. There is still some business to be done. Resolutions are submitted from the floor, studied by members, voted on, and put into the record. And now, for one of the main attractions of the meeting, Lyndon Johnson, Vice President of the United States. luckiest man in the world. I know that I have had uh, more of the good things happen to me than I think any other person in the world. And I don't think it's uh, just because of uh, some peculiar talent of mine. I think it's because of the system that that flag uh, represents. There are a hundred and nine other flags at the United Nations. There are a total of a hundred and ten countries that have membership there. Ours by far is the richest and the strongest. 
Our per capita income is almost $250 per month per person. There are only six nations out of the 110 that have a per capita income of as much as $80 a month. A compelling fact of our time is that all our people, liberals as well as conservatives, farmers as well as city residents, laborers as well as management executives, have a great and growing responsibility to join together to keep public expenditures prudent at every level, federal, state, and local. But too often, too many are too quick to conclude that foundation programs, those programs which build a stronger base for national growth and expansion, are the expendable programs when, in fact, these are the indispensable programs. This is today, as it has been for a quarter of a century, quite true of the rural electrification program. And my philosophy stated many years ago to the University of Texas in a little article I wrote is I am a free man first, an American second, a public servant third, and a Democrat fourth. And in that order, I don't expect all of you to go along with me on that number four, but thank you very much. Everybody who was here gained something from this meeting. Yes, as we turned toward home, we thought back over the many highlights of the last few busy days. And several unforgettable phrases seem to echo in our ears. Our frontiers and our challenges are great. And this is democracy at its finest. Doors of great deeds. This, I submit, is sound policy. When, in fact, these are the indispensable programs. Important not only to rural America, but to the entire nation.